the end. <laughs> Neil Young, and uh, that's his wonderful new album called uh, Americana, along with Crazy Horse, first time he's been with them for absolutely ages, and that's called High Flying Bird. I wish I could remember who recorded that. Somebody will know that, let me know, but there you go. All right, it is with great pleasure that I'm going to talk to a man in a moment who I used to uh, uh, first see at the Dreamland Ballroom in Margate for two and six. Yes, a good old half a crown and great value it was too. When well, they were known as Dean Ford and the Gay Lords, but then they changed their name. By then I'd uh, run away to sea. And believe it or not, this is one of my sure shots, one of our records of the week on the uh, the good ship Caroline, which probably explains why it wasn't a hit. There you go. But Jimi Hendrix liked it. I talked to Dean Ford after this. Wonderful. And uh, my first question was going to be, why did you move to Los Angeles? But look out the window and you'll know why. <laughs> I see the rain this marmalade. Good evening, Dean. Hi, Roger. Nice, nice to talk to you. And you, my friend. Boy, oh boy, it's been a while tracking you down. Uh, the good thing about this programme is I don't have to do any work on it. My listeners sort of do it for me. And uh, Sue McGookin uh, wrote in and said, you really ought to have Dean Ford on, you know. I said, well, if you can track him down, I'll have him on. And uh, they've been beavering away and here you are. <laughs> Well, I thank her for that. Actually, there's a few people involved in that whole thing. It was they've got a, a, a Facebook page for me. I oh, know. Yeah, Jenny Jenny Mills put this Facebook 
and I, I'm not big on, on Facebook, but uh, I, I'm not particularly fond of it, but yeah, I, I really appreciate the, the effort they put into mm-hmm. it. You know, it's wonderful. I call it fast book. <laughs> <laughs> for obvious reasons but uh, she also sent me uh, your new song the glasgow road which we will play later on of course which is oh yeah 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 uh, really good I wrote, I wrote the song a long time ago actually but we recorded it a few you know, a few years back you know yeah hey the one i just played i know uh, jimmy hendrix raved about that didn't he at the time it's him too yeah i mean it, it, it's uh, these things take once somebody says something about it it takes on a life of its own really doesn't it you know yeah. i can't remember the exact words he said but he really did like it yeah you know? yeah and that was one of the first songs you wrote wasn't it um, and I think, I think we wrote some, some, some B-sides before that, you know. Yeah. We wrote some B-sides, you know, which kind of like, you know, you could take them or leave them. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we wrote that one, and, and then we, and then Junior brought one out called, uh, um, uh, Man in the Shop. Which That's right. Kind of like, kind of psychedelic kind of thing as well. Yeah, yeah. But, right. uh, we got to the point where the record company kind of started pressuring us to do something more commercial, so they kind of started choosing songs for us, you know. Mm. And we caved a little bit, you know. <laughs> you turned down Everlasting Love, didn't you? Apparently, I, I have no memory of that, but apparently I, that's what happened. And, <laughs> I, and I don't know why we would have turned that down. But um, <laughs> I don't think personally I would have turned it down, but I, I've got no memory of that. Junior keeps telling me we turned it down. <laughs> yeah, Junior said he might be listening. He's been in Italy, I think, but he said he might be back in time to uh, to listen. So uh, Yeah, I know. I sent him an email, but I, I just realised he's been putting photographs of where he's been, you know, on, yeah. on Facebook, you know, in lovely places he visits, you know. I, I can't think why he'd want to come back. I mean, as I say, no. I, I was going to ask why you've moved to Los Angeles, but looking out the window, I can understand why, you know, it's uh, chucking it down. And uh, you, you get much better weather over there. Yeah, actually, um, I moved over here in 79, you know. Um, it was Pat Fairley, the, the room guitarist, he was still living in, in Virginia Waters at the time, and he said, why don't you go to L.A., you know. Mm. So I've been here ever, pretty much ever, well, not ever since. I... Uh, I moved to um, the New York area back in 2001, Yeah, and I lived there for eight years. My daughter lives in New Jersey, so I had a chance to go and visit, you know, mm. my daughter more, more often over there. And then sure. a couple of years ago, I just decided to come back here again. Yeah. And you, I take it you love it over there? Well, it's okay, you know. I mean, I'm still not sure where I want to end up, to be honest with you. You know, I, I miss a lot of things about the East Coast, you know, I miss getting the train in, in Grand Central Station and stuff like that. Do you? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, beautiful stuff beautiful part of uh, you know New York is lovely and yeah. I miss that kind of thing but uh who knows? You know, who knows what will happen? It's true what I said earlier on. I used to, before I got into the disc jockey lark and became the disc jockey at Dreamland, um, I used to go and pay my two and six to see what the rendezvous club down there. And you were just about the resident band when you were Dean Ford and the Gaylords, weren't you? Where was that? At Dreamland Ballroom in Margate. Oh, Dreamland, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, yeah. Peter Walsh, of course, was your agent and he used to book all the bands into there, the tremolos and everybody, because you were with the same people, weren't you? Uh, yeah, I remember we did a gig with The Who, actually, there. Oh, yeah. There was one with the Who, and we both did that song, uh, Heat Wave. <laughs> they, they played it, and so did we. And they weren't playing very well that night. I think they were all pretty much drunk that time. Yeah. Night. But, um, the, um, but I, I've always loved the Who. I was looking completely in awe of Pete Townsend, you know. But, but we regulars at that, that ballroom, we knew you'd make it because you were just an outstanding uh, sort of group before, uh, you know, you got the, the, the hits. And uh, that sort of we just we could tell because you used to do two ass sets in those days for half a crown, and of course uh, then you got the hits and it was five shillings to go and see. Good grief! Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Outra- sometimes ten shillings even, dear dear. But uh, hey ho. But uh, I mean, when loving things came along, I mean that sort of changed it completely, doesn't it? From being the support act, you were then the headliners. Yeah, for a while. I mean, but the, the thing about us is different because we were still coming along at a time where it was singles and not albums, you know. Mm. I think I think it held us back album-wise was we didn't really write, write a lot of songs, you know, and we didn't write a lot of songs in, the, in any particular vein, you know. Sure. So they were kind of all over the place at times. Some of them were good, some of them were kind of like okay, and uh, I think that's what kind of killed us in a way, you know. There wasn't, you know, you get you, you get Led Zeppelin coming along at the time, and uh, they didn't even need a hit, you know, sort of thing. Mm. We were still doing sort of like um, top ten type material. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not. Uh, I don't regret it, though. I mean, it's like it's, it's all in the past now, anyway. And, and some of it was good, and some of it wasn't so good. You know, it's just the way it works. You were an incredible busy band, though. You must have been out about seven nights a week, weren't you, in those days? When we moved to London, yeah, we were travelling all over England, all over the place. We got a good reputation because before we actually became Marmalade, we were quite well sought out. You know, we mm. were playing all the, the, the stack stuff. You know, yeah. weddings and James Brown songs and stuff like that. And That's what, yeah, I remember you was being a sort of soul based band at first. Yeah, there a lot of that stuff going on. Yeah, a lot of it. And mm. uh, I guess you know, 
because we didn't write any songs of our own at that time. Yeah. Anyway, but, um, I think even when we brought records out, we didn't we didn't really do that much of our our, our records actually on stage, except for maybe loving things, all the deal with that, our reflections and yeah. and rainbow. I think, yeah. And of course, yeah. uh, you mentioned Obla D there. I mean, um, some yeah, people, when they covered Beatles songs, uh, didn't do very well, but y you uh, took it to number one, which is a rarity, wasn't it? It was kind of a rarity, yeah, and we weren't too, we weren't too keen on it, but that was another one where we were pressurised <laughs> into doing so, and it got us our first number one record, and, and it was good in some ways and bad in other ways, you know, because we, people remembered us from, you know, the club days, you know, they went, sure. why are they doing this, recording that, you know? Mm -hmm. But um, it actually got us more like a uh, worldwide fame, you might say. And yeah. Well, stay where you are, because I'm going to uh, play another song for you, and I'm also going to play the new song a little bit later on, so uh, don't go away, we'll be right back with it. We've got some travel to do, it's, which is one of the reasons you'll be glad you're not here. It's still stuffed on the M25, which wasn't even built when you were here, I don't think. But, uh, oh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be with you in a moment, OK? Bye. 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 Share your travel news. Call 08459 811111. BBC Across the South. Of course, I'm not the first person to interview uh, Dean Ford and the boys. Um, <laughs> guess what I came across today, just before we play Reflections of My Life? This is... Um, this is something from my guests, the, uh, about the late 60s. And now, ladies and gentlemen, imported for you especially from the wild highlands and lowlands of Scotland, marmalade. Oh, ye candy, shove your candy up the bus. Oh, ye candy, shove your candy up the bus. Oh, ye candy, shove your candy, because she's your mommy's mommy. Ye candy, shove your candy up the bus. Yes, well, thank you very much. Now, I mean, send that one to me from over there behind the drum. He speaks English, I believe. <laughs> Are you the interpreter for this group? Yes, I'm English. I'm jolly glad to hear it. Now, <laughs> tell me, after that awful, dreadful shimozzle there, what sort of things you chaps are doing at the moment, work-wise? Um, we've just finished a week cabaret in Birmingham. Yes. Which was good fun. And we've got uh, a visit to Poland. Yeah. I think we've, you know, got quite a name in Poland. They don't have many groups, but... Uh, what uh, the name you've got in Poland? Yes, I wonder. <laughs> There's still a chance, of course, that the new record is, is really going to go, isn't Every there? Chance. I think Every so, yeah. chance, the man said over there. The best thing we've ever done, the best thing we're ever likely to do, and it'll be a number one somewhere, mark my words. Uh, hey, you see, yes, the word of the prophet. OK, yeah. what's it? <laughs> well, that was the word of, I'm Got sure. What's it? It's, it's called? Uh, reflections of my life. Well, give us a few reflections of it now, will you? Right, son.
Well, it wasn't their biggest hit, but it is their most played record on the radio. Superb. Introduced by Brian Matthew there. <laughs> and uh, that is Reflections of My Life. We're talking to Dean Ford. You used to do a lot of those BBC sessions, didn't you, Dean? Yeah, I think everybody did them, actually. You know, um, they actually, the record com- the last record company we were with actually released one of them, and uh, some of the, the sounds are really bad. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah, th- there was a couple of tracks that came out really good, you know, but... Um, it's just that you, you, you get enough time to kind of check on things, you know. They sure. don't like kind of listen to what it is, what it's like before you play it, you know. Yeah. It's the way it used to be with the old uh, recording studios as well. well. We had Tony Hicks on from the Hollies the other week, and they've done the same with some Hollies BBC sessions as uh, as well. So it seems to be uh, the thing to... And speaking of which, Graham Nash is on Reflections, isn't he? I don't think he's actually on. No, he wasn't there at that session. No, he was actually involved in uh, I See the Rain. Oh, was he? On, 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 on CBS, yeah, but he wasn't involved in Reflections. Oh, I see. What an honour to have him on your record, though. Hang on, I think he just came in. I think uh, Junior just asked him in, you know, to, you know is this a... Uh, kind of co-producer, you know, an advisor or something like that, you know. Yeah. I'm not, I can't really remember very much about it. It's been such a long time ago. I love the way Brian Matthews said, uh, while we speak to Alan Whitehead, he's the only Englishman in the group. Talk about <laughs> racist. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he thought he couldn't understand us. <laughs> <laughs> very funny. Yeah. Am I right in thinking, like, did, didn't you uh, used to come on stage to the music of the Seven Dwarfs or something? No. Did no. you not? I thought yeah. it, it must have been somebody else then. Yeah, the, the memory isn't what it used to be. I thought, I just thought yeah, it might have been... <laughs> <laughs> you know the feeling. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've got to write a lot of stuff down there, you know. Oh, well, absolutely. Alan's been on the programme as well, uh, just uh, not so very long, about a year and a half ago, so he, yeah. might, he might well he be... He might be here about a year ago, actually, and we just, said, we just we saw him for a couple of hours in one afternoon. And yes. Still, still, one, still one for the ladies, by the way, so oh, yeah. uh, no change there, then. Uh, I mean, what have you been doing since you've been in America? Have you been singing at all over there, or uh, totally away from the business? Yeah, yeah I actually, yeah, I got. I'm, I'm really quite a lazy person when it comes to I've kind of like setting my ways. And uh, mm. before I went to New York, I was playing in little places in LA, just you know, 45 minute spots here, and I just by myself on my acoustic guitar, uh, no recording deal or anything like that. Just uh, mm. you, you know, amusing myself with my own songs, you know, singing mm. my own songs, newer songs. And uh, it was pretty good for me, you know, just getting out there in sure. front of an audience. Did you, know? you do Reflections? Because that was a hit in America, wasn't it? Uh, no, actually, uh, if I ever go and do that again, actually, I will do it, you know. Yeah. But we did a gig, actually, in Topanga Canyon about just a bit, five or six weeks ago. Oh, yeah. Um, and it was an old, uh, an old theatre called, called The Globe that this guy bought over and uh, refurbished it. And it was like, a, it, it took us a while to get the gear set up. It took us two whole days to get everything set up. But it was actually well worth it, you know, and... Uh, we we, re, we we sang a lot of other people's songs, including some of our own, you know, like a Tom Waits song and stuff like that, and yeah. and uh, Towns Van Zant and people like that. But uh, it was a really good gig, you know. And and uh, my friend Joe and I, you know, he's we, we think you're trying to take it out as just two or two of us, maybe three people, you know. Brilliant. Just doing maybe little clubs here and there. So we'll see what happens with that, you know. Going to bring it over here or not? Well, I don't know. I mean, we'll have to try to see how it goes here first because uh, at the moment we don't have. 
the right balance of material to do, like, say, an hour and 15 minutes. You know, we've got a lot of slow songs, but we don't, we don't have enough fast ones to kind of balance it out yet. Yeah. But um, basically, you know, we're, we're trying to get an album together, you know. Good. We're, get, we're going to try and get an album together if we can get some studio time, yeah. At a recent decent price, you know. Fantastic. That would be nice, you know. Speaking of doing other people's songs, what's the story behind uh, the Fever you did as a Bruce Springsteen uh, tribute album? Uh, I saw a track from. Oh uh, uh, yeah, yeah. That's uh, when I was doing my solo stuff. You know, um, we were trying to figure out songs to do, it, and I can't remember who who came up with that. It may have been the, the guy that worked for EMI Records that said, "I think this would be good for you." Hmm. And um, yeah, the Bruce Springsteen song. Yeah, it's. Um, it turned out okay, you know. The thing about it was, uh, it was recorded by, it was produced by Jimmy Miller, you know. Was it? Stone stuff, yeah. All right. He did three tracks for us, but they never. Yeah, that's the only one that's, that got released, you know. And afterwards, he kind of disappeared, you know. Um, I don't really want to go into that. He's a really lovely guy, but he was really kind of messed up at that time. And was he? He's no longer with us, yeah. Oh, indeed not. Yeah, hey, I, really, uh, I really liked him, though. Yeah, yeah. And, and and Alan Parsons, uh, of course, you you did a song for for him. What was it like working with Alan? It was terrific. Well, I did a whole, my whole solo album with Alan, Alan actually. Oh, I yeah. A solo album back in uh, the mid-70s. Yeah. And Alan was just working as a, a, you know, the house producer, basically. Sure. He just came off uh, That Side of the Moon. Oh, and yeah. He, did, you know, he was doing all these, you know, Cockney Rebel and all these different people and did us and they did me and and uh, I loved doing it I just loved the album you know I mean it was it's just songs I had lying around you know good, bad or indifferent I loved just doing an album in Abbey Road it was wonderful and he lives in America now do you ever run into him over there? actually I saw him about a year and a half ago he was doing a, a gig about 40, 40 miles from here yeah? yeah, yeah he's, he goes out by himself now and he just picks up local musicians and stuff like that and uh and does uh, dresses for a couple of weeks with him and does gigs, yeah. That's ironic, because he never did gigs when he was over here. <laughs> if you check out, there's a website for him, you know, and he's all over the place. He goes to, to Europe and everything. Yeah, he does really well. Marvellous. That's, that's true. Yeah, when we played Reflections, you sort of changed your image by then, didn't you? Um, you were sort of dropping the soul stuff a bit, and we're, we're doing it, I guess, because you were writing more of your own songs, was that? Yeah, but there is a soulfulness in that record anyway, though. Oh, yeah, I know, but I mean, not like it's your, the Atlantic yeah. stuff you used to do on stage, you know? Yeah, yeah, um, I think we still played some of that stuff on stage, even though we were doing Reflections. I can't remember what the set list was like then, but... Uh, yeah. But yeah, that was that was a huge huge song for us. Actually, a little of the deal that that was the first number one. Mm. Reflections of my life is the one overall time mm. that people remember. You know, sure. There's a whole slew of people in America. You know, a lot of you know people that came back from the Vietnam War who know that song. Yeah, I got it. There's a lot of people. You know, they got a lot. It was a comfort to them that song, even you know. No, I agree. That's uh, what music's all about. Tell us about this this thing with Joe Tanzin. Then uh, you know, what what's the prospects of that? Can people actually buy it now, or what? Um, you, you can actually buy that particular the Glasgow Road actually on iTunes. Yeah, it's, it's available on iTunes. Oh right, uh, via yeah. website is that is that how they get? Or they just go onto iTunes for that, do they? Yeah, iTunes. But uh, Dean Ford and, and, and Joe Tanzin, Glasgow Road to the Glasgow Road, and you know, it'll come up somewhere. How did you run into Joe? And when I first came to LA, we lived in this place called um, Woodland Hills, and and I was with all the guys from Blue, the, you know. Oh yeah. Yeah, they were cool because Hugh used to be in the band with us, and and uh, Blue were actually, you know, over at the same just just shortly after I came over, and we all kind of lived in the house together for a yeah. while. Yeah. And Joe um, came around, uh, came around with an old another Scottish guy, you know, Ian Clues, yeah. you know, that we knew from the past as well, and you know, we just slowly get to know each other. And then when, when Blue went back to England, I, I moved to, to a place called uh, Sherman Oaks, and Joe lives in Sherman Oaks, and we did some demos together and stuff like that. So um, well, on, on and off, we've been, we've been, he's been recording me on different songs, demos, that whatever, you know, over the last 20-odd uh, years, <laughs> mm. 25 years, you may say. Well, on behalf of all your fans over here, including me, we'd love to see you over here, and uh, good luck with the album. Um, you know, if well, it's, it, well, you know, I'm sure sooner or later we'll get something done that looks like an album, you know. Well, perhaps you'll come and play live in the studio when you do. Uh, that'd be fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to make a thanks out to, to Sue McGugan, yeah. uh, Virginia Mills for starting up page, Facebook page for me, and Sheila Godfrey for all, all, her, all her great support, you know. Ain't it nice to have support after all these years, eh? Yes, yeah. 
and, and I want to thank Junior for calling me up and, and pushing me. Or, yeah, it, yeah. Well, he said you're a bit worried about coming on, but hope it wasn't too painful for you. No, not at all. And he's, <laughs> he's always the one. He, even when we were songwriting, he's the one who always came up with the musical ideas and, and then hand them to me. You know, marvelous. Pretty, pretty much all the time. Lovely talking to you, my friend. And we'll see you over here. All right. Thanks very much, Roger. Cheers. Bye. Keep watching, women. Yeah. Oh, I did enjoy that. Get paid for talking to my heroes. Obscene, really, isn't it? When I had nothing left to show You came along and eased the blow And set me on that open road Four wheels and my radio Just give me up this old highway A country road and I'll be okay There'll be nothing left for you to say Now I'm doing it my way Oh, good luck I've been locked up, baby In my head for so long Shut up Now I'm on my way I'm on my way Hit me with your saddest song Tell me lies Till the cows come home I know where I belong Head north Oh, look I've been locked up, baby In my head So Dean's still listening, but uh, Colin Blunston sends you all his best wishes, as does Tony Rivers, listening down in Spain. Hello, you long-eared hippie. How are you doing? All right. <laughs> That's so good. You can buy it now on iTunes. Glasgow Road, Dean Ford and Joe Tanzin. Buy lots of copies and they can come over and get on my programme. Purely selfish reasons, of course. Wonderful. Thanks to uh, Dean Ford for coming on. It is eight o'clock. Travel. BBC Across the South. And here's the latest from Paul. Hello, the A34 is shut. This is because of an incident. It's shut between...